This chaga is pretty fresh. That's the last one I took from over there just before the sap started running in the birch trees. And uh, I was, I'm able to use a knife to carve off pieces of it and put it into the kettle because it's still relatively soft. It's not dehydrated, like I can put my finger in that. But for selling it and for shipping it out to you guys, uh, we had to get it dehydrated in a commercial kitchen and packaged so that we can ensure that it was safe. This can go moldy. I've put it in jars like this before while it's still moist like that, but like a little bit, yeah, a little bit of moisture in it and put a lid on it tight and it ends up, um, yeah, just getting moldy. So you have to dehydrate it, leave it out on a counter or put it in an oven for a long time on really low heat or in a dehydrator. And uh, just, like I said, just dehydrate it so that all the moisture's out of it and it can't go moldy. And then it's good for pretty much forever. Um, the way I do it, I like to use a big kettle like this. So the reason I use a big kettle like that for just a couple of reasons actually. One is that when you're making chaga to retain the nutrients in it, uh, what you want to do is to uh, boil it for, sorry, not boil it, but simmer it for a long time. So I don't want to boil it vigorously and kill any any beneficial nutrients. So I'll simmer it for a really long time though. I'll put s several large chunks in a kettle like that and I'll keep drinking it and just topping up the water for sometimes as long as a week. And what that does is just gets all of the nutrients out of this. And when, how I know when to stop doing that is basically when it runs clear. So I'm essentially pulling all of the, the dark tannins out of, out of the uh, chaga. And then once it's exhausted completely, then I throw those chunks out and put new chunks in, clean the kettle out and start over again. So if you're interested in buying the chaga, um, there's a link now on our website. Now, we'll try to put a link in the description and the bottom of this video. And you can uh, click on that and order it. It's not cheap just because they had to go through that extra process of packaging and, and dehydrating it properly. And, um, and then shipping, of course, is just what it is. You can't really do anything about the shipping costs. Now, I'm not going to make any health claims because I um, <laughs> I harvest this stuff and now I'm drying it and selling it to you guys. But other than that, I'm not a medical doctor. I haven't done any research on this. Now, as much as I drink it and I believe the health benefits, and I believe part of the reason I'm healthy is because I do eat wild foods, uh, I'm not um, an expert and I haven't done the appropriate studies myself, so I'm not going to tell you any of the health benefits, but please look them up if you're interested in purchasing it, purchasing any of this chaga or drinking it um, f from another source, or if you find wild chaga and you're, you want, you're interested in what, it, uh, what it's good for, then uh, please do the research. But like I said, I, I just can't, I'm not legally allowed to, to tell you what, uh, make any health claims. So. That being said, you see me harvest it all the time and you see me drink it all the time. This is what it looks like when it's on the tree, of course. I harvested this right across the creek from the new cabin site. I got, uh, I have lots of it. I've got jars full of it inside the workshop here as well and in the old cabin. So that's what it's, it looks like and it's typically found on birch trees. Um, I have more yellow birch you can see any behind me here 
well even this little one right here is a couple saplings coming up but anyway we're we got a lot of silver birch in this forest and a few white birch it grows on both um, and the other day I just found a um, hop hornbeam uh, an ironwood small tree that was growing right beside a birch tree there was a big chunk of chag on the birch tree and right beside it there was on this hop hornbeam that might be the first time I've ever seen that so it does happen on other other things as well so yeah you probably get 20 handfuls out of that so 20 pots and we're recommending brewing it three times it's just airing on the side of caution instead of letting it you know stay in the pot for like a week or two like i do and potentially going moldy just recommending that you, you maybe brew it uh, th with three full pots so and bigger bigger kettle than that's so probably what a couple of liters i'm not sure what size the typical pot is but anyway let's say you get three brewings out of that and there's four cups out of each that's 12 cups out of each brewing and there's like i said there's a I mean, it depends on the handful, but 10 or 20, so you're getting anywhere from 50 to 100 cups of, of chaga, I would say, out of it. So when you think of it that way, it's it's actually pretty reasonably priced, despite the amount of work harvesting it and drying it, packaging it, and then shipping it. Yeah, that's good. So we're going to get some... Uh, I'll show it to you in this pot. It's a kettle and then I'll get some sap water. So if you're interested, like I said, you can click on the link below or go to the website anytime and order from our shop. Mm -hmm.